Hello, I'm Lindsay. Hello, Lindsay. I'm Sarah. And this is Adwit, the audio drama writer's independent toolkit. Yes, it is. Each week we talk about an aspect of writing for audio drama, discuss some examples, and then, then we give you a writing exercise that you can use to play with that aspect of audio drama, you lucky things. Yes. We want there to be more good audio drama to listen to, and we we want you to have less stress making it. Yes, please. Uh, Massaging. Yes. This time we're going to talk about, this time around, this episode, we are going to talk about dialogue. Dialogue writing is hard to get right. Speaking, isn't it? Yeah. I totally procrastinated on this, on planning Mm. this episode, because Uh I just paced around the house. Because writing dialogue is one of those things that's like jazz in some ways or flavor. Mm. Yeah. You know what's, it's, you know what's good when you see it or hear it. But it's hard to explain how to make it what it is. It has to show character and give the audience a taste of background, but it has to move the plot forward. Always onwards, yes. Yes. And that's the point. Really good dialogue writing skill comes from listening. You listen a lot to how people talk and you learn different ways of expressing yourself and you pick up some things. Yes, this is true. And and the way people speak is like a fingerprint, isn't it, Lindsay? I mean, no Mm -hmm. two people speak in exactly the same way. (laughs) Because if they do, there's there's something inherently wrong in that, isn't there? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, Nobody speaks like me, thankfully. Now, maybe sometimes you you might want to have a really homogenous world, perhaps, where everybody talks in exactly the same way all the time. And if, if that's for a reason, then we'll just do it, right? But maybe you're hinting at something like, I don't know, mind control or that everyone is a robot. Well, Mm -hmm. you know, that's cool. You know, you can knock yourself out and play with that. But uh, the easiest way to have your audience have trouble figuring out who's speaking is if all of your voice actors sound alike. Um, It's just a terrible thing. And that's why a lot of people perhaps don't get cast too, because they just sound like someone else, not because they weren't any good. And if you do search on YouTube for regional accents, you'll find so much glorious information on how how to adapt those accents. And and all of this is hugely useful for for you creating your works. I think the more Mm -hmm. you listen to to how people talk, particularly when they're not aware that they're being observed, well, that's going to help you, right, with developing your your brilliant characters, tombas Mm -hmm. and pastes and so on. So it's not just about accents, is it, as as much as it is about the potential tics of speech. Yeah. Multiple writing teachers have advised me to do the following Mm -hmm. and... I'm going to say right now, I am not a lawyer. I do not play one on TV. This is not legal advice. Don't do this. Uh, I'm going to tell you not to do this, even though it'll help your writing. How's that sound? It's great. It's this is what you do. Go to the go to a public place and sit near people who aren't aware that they're being observed. Mm -hmm. This was something that was much easier to do pre-COVID. Um, record them and then transcribe their dialogue word for word when you get home. <gasps> That's so naughty, but yep. so exciting. But it's it is and so like helpful. Mm. Uh, for example, if you go to a diner where yeah. they have booths that sit back to back to each other and yeah. they have nice high seat backs and mm. you sit there and you order your coffee and your waffles or whatever sounds lovely and you know just sit there and sort of uh you know get your phone out put on voice memo and just record the people sitting on the other side of you it's uh is it is it morally wrong probably are they out in public yes do they have an expectation of privacy? Yeah. Again, not a lawyer. This is not legal advice, but it will help you hear all of the, you know what I'm saying? The lilts. All, yeah. the, all those ticks, all of those things mm. that people tend to do. Uh-uh. Uh, and once you see it written out, it's, it's a revelation. Once you once you you sit down and you write it all out and you, it's a revelation. You realize you learn so much about how people speak, so true. where they hesitate, and that gives you some clues about why they hesitate. Mm-hmm. Anyway, another thing that multiple writing teachers have told me is come to the conversation late and leave early. What does that mean, Lindsay? 
Well, if you write a conversation between two people, you can pretty much cut out the first and last quarters of the conversation and not lose anything important or interesting. <laughs> this is like cutting Wr- off the first two yeah, pages. Yeah, writers, of your script, especially when they're starting out, they tend to do this thing where, um, hello, you know, as a instead of saying, you know, hey Sarah, what's up, mm-hmm. or getting on the Zoom call and saying, I'm so sorry, I just had to grab another coffee. Instead, people would say, hello, Sarah, my friend who is also a podcaster. How are you today? <laughs> I am and, well, thank you. Also podcaster friend Lindsay, yeah. who is wearing a yellow T-shirt. Yeah, there's yeah. always that 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 little bit of exposition that you really don't need. This is true. And that's, yeah. that's really tough to get around, isn't it? I mean, I, I yeah. think there's also the example of the wonderful Real Inspector Hound by Tom Stoppard, mm-hmm. where you'll hear some absolutely hilarious examples of that bad exposition we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was in this as well in 1999. Mm-hmm. Uh, I played this very maid who answers the phone with, uh, hello, the mansion on the moor with a house full of strange guests. Well, I hope we won't have that terrible thunderstorm that's been rumoured for the last five days, etc. Yeah. Exactly. That's that 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 incredibly bad exposition yeah. that you want to cut out. Think about how you talk with your siblings or your spouses versus how you talk with your mother. doctor, your parents, friends, and so on. People change yes. their tone for different statuses and situations. Yeah, People unless ha- your, do- your your brother was your doctor's mm-hmm. friend. No, yeah. sorry. I distracted us. Carry yeah. on. <laughs> People have verbal tics. They have things that they habitually say. When my father-in-law wanted to get to the point, he would say, the thing of it is. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. when my boss, Matthew, and I are wrapping up a conversation, we'll say to mm-hmm. each other, cool, 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 mm-hmm. cool. I mean, you know, to somebody else, it would sound like we were imitating pigeons or something. My my worst verbal tick these days uh-huh. is oh, saying goodness. what I'm trying. OK, here we go. My worst verbal tick these days is that I say, I'll edit it. And I always get asked, what? Like, nobody knows what I'm talking about. I'm saying, I'll edit it. But it comes out sounding like a ball thumping down a flight of steps. I'll edit it. Um, I mean, everybody has those idiosyncrasies, don't they? How they speak. Uh, And and, I mean, could you just have a little muse on why this is important in audio drama, Lindsay. I mean, the the uniqueness of character dialogue is another piece of the beautiful puzzle that just helps helps your audience track what's happening, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And speaking of tracking what's happening, keep the plot moving. No matter how cute and clever these characters are, no matter how witty these characters have to move forward toward whatever it is they want. Yes, my darlings. Mm Mm-hmm. But there's a difficult balance here because you don't want to have an information dump. And dialogue is it, dialogue is always about what the character wants. It's very rare to have two people introduce themselves to each other or reiterate things that happened in the past. For example, mm-hmm. hi, Kate, it's me, your friend Charles, who you have known ever since second grade. It's good to see you again so we can discuss our ongoing plan to rob the liquor store across the street. <laughs> Yes, but I mean, in audio drama, we, we just have to come out and say things like, here we are on the Titanic's maiden voyage, just sometimes, because we don't have that visual stuff to be to help us tell the story. So sometimes sound just won't do it alone. Yes. People naturally make small talk, but don't waste your audience's time. People mm-hmm. have a tendency to mutter, repeat themselves, <laughs> use the wrong word for what they mean. Um like, for example, say somebody I know says, instead of saying specific, he says Pacific. Oh. And you have to learn how to balance naturalism for clarity. Um, there's a balance between what you as the writer want them to say. Uh, for example, it's Wednesday, January 15th. The bank closes in 30 minutes and I've got a loaded gun in my pocket. Let's go commit a robbery. Let's. And what they want to say, for example, Wow, the slush and ice sucks. You know where the weather is great this time of year? Brazil, which is only $1,000 plane ticket away. Yes. Yeah. So as an example, I would like to talk about the first episode of Tin Can Audio's marvelous podcast, The Tower. I love that. Everything David Devereaux and Team Touch is glorious audio, people. Go listen to all of it. Binge, binge, binge. Yes, yes, yes. yes. They are so good. So- the first episode of The Tower leaves me 
as a listener with so many questions. Mm -hmm. Um, Exciting. Warning, spoilers for The Tower. If you have not listened to the the first episode of The Tower by Tin Can Audio, go listen to it right now. Don't worry, we'll be here. Um, You back? Lovely. Well done. Yes, good, isn't it? it. And now that you're back. Ah, thank you. You're back. Thank you for going and listening to The Tower by Tin Can Audio. And you probably are feeling a bit anxious now. But anyway, so yeah, this woman calls, a woman calls a man and says, hey, I'm going to climb the tower. Mm -hmm. And his reaction is shock and surprise. Yeah, and surprise. Yeah. And an almost thematical, no. Yeah. If I said to you, if I, like, for example, if I knew... If I, if Sarah, if you knew that I was like violently allergic to shrimp or violently allergic to shellfish. Yeah. And our phone call consisted of just me saying, Sarah, I'm going to eat some shrimp. Mm, Your reaction would probably be. Don't put you off. (laughs) Yeah. Please don't do that, Lindsay. Yeah. And it's, you know, which makes the person listening say, what's up with the shrimp? (laughs) Or what's up with her that she can't have the shrimp? Yeah. So the absolute minimum of dialogue in this episode of The Tower, yeah. uh, it makes me wonder. She says, I'm going to climb the tower. And he reacts as if it's, is it a death sentence? Mm-hmm. Or is it, uh, it's, it's obviously some kind of grand adventure. I'm yeah. guessing it's something like the Appalachian Trail. Um, oh. Like in, yeah. in America, to figure out who they were as a person, they went and they hiked the Appalachian Trail, which is a trail that runs from Maine to Florida. Okay. Yeah, it's thousands of miles. It's very beautiful. I actually hiked a very small part of it when I was about eight years old. Oh, it sounds um, glorious. Really, it's really it's beautiful. lovely. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's it's one of those things that people do to be completely alone with themselves in nature. I mean, yeah, there's that wonderful walk, walk from Cape Town all the way to uh, Magadan in Russia, isn't there, that you can do no need for planes or boats. It's, it's 22,387 Ooh. kilometers of glorious walking through country. Ooh. I Let's knew somebody that. who did the, but it, so the tower is something like this. We don't know what it is. Why is she climbing it? He says, he, she says, I'm, I plan to come back. Yeah. Which is, uh, I'm trying to remember in the episode, I believe that planning to come back was unusual mm. for some reason. Yes. So why is she climbing it if people don't come back? Mm. And what is so bad where she is right now that she's going to go do this? Yeah. The, yep. the guy isn't bad and she obviously yeah. trusts him. Yep. So it can't be. It If if he's her ex and they broke up, they're clearly still friends. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're close enough that they have this absolute minimum of dialogue. They know each other really well. So she must be coping with a loss of some kind or depression. And she asks him to come with her to the foot of the tower. And they also say something about, um, oh, and they have to leave at eight o'clock at night. Yep. Yes. But why would you start a, a hike time. at night? Yeah, they're leaving at a crazy time. Yeah. Why would you start that hike? You're obviously not starting that hike at night. You're obviously getting on the bus or the train or whatever and going and getting there early. At least that's how it felt. That's how it landed for me. Mm-hmm. So what is this place? It yeah. tells us so little, but yeah. it has a huge impact because it makes us fill in the blanks. That's what's awesome about the tower. Actually, the tower continues to be intriguing and exciting after that. Oh, and Sarah, and you're in it. Piece. I, I do. I pop up just a fun, fun little monologue playing the character's mummy, actually. And they do have season two happening very shortly, which it has been really. recorded over the last six months or so. Yeah. So so look Ooh. out for that glorious Ooh. beast. Um, but yeah, I, I just love it because it's not only, uh, I know this is about dialogue this episode, but essentially it also does tell the story through the beautiful soundscaping and music too. So 
that's another yes. character right there. But that's for another time, right? But, yes. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Get piquing your audience's interest by making them question these potential decisions that these characters have been making, the, the um, events that they are deciding to partake in. Yeah, so so I think, you want I think them to come back for the next episode. one thing you can do is write the mm. obvious dialogue, like uh, write, the, write the obvious scene. And then write the, write the obvious dialogue and then leave, walk away from it, go for a yeah. walk, Yeah. Uh, fold up that piece of paper On the and set trail. it aside. Yeah. Don't look at yeah. it. Walk away, yeah. go for a walk, come back and rewrite it from memory. Yeah. You'll forget what wasn't important and you'll remember what was. That's the first exercise to do, people, with your mm-hmm. and then senior go working back. on. That's Try a good it. one. And then go back. And see what else you can take out. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what I would recommend for your exercise this week is to write 10 lines of dialogue <gasps> ten. between two characters, uh-huh. different ages, genders, social strata, uh, places of origin, etc. Yep. And they've both been feeding the same stray cat for the past month. Ah, oh, poor buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna home, the buddy cat. Well, sometimes okay. cats don't want a home. Sometimes they just want to be outside. This is so true, Lindsay. Yep. See, Sometimes look at all the life lessons we're inside. learning and thinking about. This is beautiful. So this this lovely stray cat, uh, obviously, I guess, uh, it doesn't have any lines itself. It's the people we want to hear no, from. No, the cat but, doesn't know. talk. <laughs> and, but but yeah. they've, they've both been feeding the stray cat for a month, and they mm. have different reasons for yeah. feeding the cat. And, and that's maybe, exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe you can make this more specific and immediate by they both find that the cat is very sick. Oh, no. No, yeah. don't make the cat sick, Lindsay. Well, they get sick. Oh, okay, fair but enough. But then they get another, well. Another life lesson. They get well if you take care of Yeah, they have nine lives. Yes, this is true. How yes. many have you got? I'm on number six, I think, now. <sighs> um, <laughs> but no, that's very I'm, exciting. So ten lines of dialogue, two mm-hmm. characters of different... Mm-hmm. everything's and uh, see what happens what does uh, someone with poverty and someone with privilege have what does someone with uh, nothing and someone with everything have what does or, someone or what does someone with a very strong religious or moral sense Ooh. have why would it what's the difference between a very pious uh very religious catholic feeding a cat versus an atheist agnostic feeding a cat whatever one works for pray you for the light bulb oh i thought you were telling a joke yeah no absolutely i think one one is is very exciting so yeah i yep. we would love to if you want to share anything with us feel Please. free to to ping it to us on our email which is writers at gmail.com and uh how exciting today now that you too can use these skills and what we've talked about to enhance your audio drama and and we do hope you get cracking as soon as your time in your life your beautiful lives allow so uh, yes. i think it's goodbye actually for from me, Sarah Golding. Goodbye. Well, actually, Sarah, a couple of things. One thing oh. is, first of all, if people want to get in touch with us, they need to reach out to us at, um, well, if they want to, if they have any questions, they can reach out to us at um, on Twitter. Uh, Adwit Podcast is our Twitter handle. Yes. And, and please do also rate and review and share us on your social media channels as well. It would be great to help folks find us and hopefully get other people inspired to just get writing. Yeah, and reviews also tell us, you know, they let us know that what we're doing, they help us shape the show. They do. Yes. yes. So if you've got any ideas as to where you'd like us to focus our adwit, adwittery, adwitaciousness, then what please What tools do we do. need in the toolkit? Yes. What else do we need to do? Let us know. So happy writing from happy us. Happy writing. Ta-ta. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Avanti. <laughs> You lucky folks have been listening to the Audio Drama Writers Independent Toolkit, hosted by Sarah Golding and Lindsay harris Friel. Audio engineering, sound design and music, gorgeous music, by Vincent Friel. Huzzahs! If you enjoyed what you heard, oh please do write us a review on Podchaser or on Apple Podcasts, or any podcatcher, quite frankly, we'd love to hear what you think, or... 
You can tweet about us if you like. Yes, our Twitter handle is at Adwit Podcast. And please do keep in touch. We'd love to know how you're getting on with all the exercises and more. Or if you just want to say hello, do that too. You can write to us at writersadwit at gmail.com. And for more information about what we're doing and what we're up to and how, visit our website at adwit.org. Thank you very much for listening, people. I hope you have a good day. Take care. Bye. Adwit is created and recorded on the unceded land of the Lenni Lenape Nation. To learn more about the Lenape, their history, and their culture, please visit their website at lenapenation.org. Sixty-six thirty productions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.